This is the Proton Guru video practice for topic 1.4. These problems will give you practice on identifying nucleophiles, electrophiles, and functional groups. Some brief and straightforward reading to get you ready for these problems can be found in the Organic Chemistry 1 Primer 2018 in Lesson 1.4. You can also find additional chemistry videos and information on how to match the videos to your particular course's textbook at ProtonGuru.com. This first problem shows us a relatively complicated molecule, in this case it's morphine, and it asks us to circle and label the non-alkane functional groups in the molecule. Well, the easiest way to identify functional groups is first to look for any heteroatom, any atoms that are not carbon or hydrogen. These will, of course, be parts of functional groups, and I've circled those in blue here. Next, if you look for double or triple bonds, and try to identify specifically any hexagonal arrangements where you have alternating double bonds and single bonds around the ring, those are a specific type of functional group called an arene or an aromatic. So now I've circled those, and the last thing you have to do once you've identified the heteroatoms and the multiple bonds is to fill in the names for the different functional groups. So these are pretty simple problems. You look for the heteroatoms and multiple bonds, watch for the arenes, and then you apply your labels. So here we have the alcohol functional group, ether, alkene, amine, and the arene or aromatic functional group. So if you pause the video and take a look at this molecule, see if you can identify the functional groups on strychnine, a toxic product derived from plants. And the procedure will be the same as the previous problem. You look for those heteroatoms like the nitrogens or the oxygens in these structures, and then you label them up. Now one hint, whenever you see this carbon-oxygen double bond, which is called a carbonyl unit, you've got to look for what's beside it. So if I have a carbon on one side and a nitrogen on the other, that's what's known as an amide or a carboxamid. But it's important to look next to that carbon-oxygen double bond because there are actually seven common functional groups, ketones, aldehydes, etc., that all share that common C double bond O carbonyl unit. Now let's do the same thing for aspartame. This is the molecule that's responsible for the sweet flavor of NutraSweet. So if you identify all those groups, there are a couple additional carbonyl examples, C double bond O, with an OH beside it, that's carboxylic acid, with an O with some R group, some CH3 or other non-hydrogen carbon-based group, that's called an ester. And then another one here is the amide that we saw in the previous example. And in addition, we have an amine and an arene. And now we transition to a different type of problem where we're asked to draw curved arrows pointing to each site that might attract a nucleophile, and draw arrows pointing away from each site that might attract an electrophile. So to start this process, we should find all of the polar bonds. Remember, electrophiles will be attracted to negative sites, and nucleophiles will be attracted to positive sites. So if we fill in partial charges, we'll start to address that problem. And remember that multiple bonds are also areas where there are extra electrons or an excess of electron density. There are four electrons, for example, in a double bond. We'll also want to add any missing lone pairs because an electrophile, like a proton, for example, would attract a lone pair towards it. Positive charges attract negative charges like electrons. So here I filled in all the lone pairs. You want to go back and make sure you can do that on your own. And I've identified all the partial positive and partial negative ends of all the polar bonds. The last thing I've done in this problem is I've made all the multiple bonds. In this case, you've got a bunch of double bonds, and I've colored those in blue for this example. Now we've identified all of these different potential electrophilic or nucleophilic sites, and next we need to identify the positive sites, as being the electrophiles that will attract nucleophiles to them, and we're asked to point arrows towards those to show that they want electrons. So here I've went ahead and pointed an arrow at every atom that had a partial positive on the previous page. Those are all sites that might be electrophilic and pull electrons towards them. So finally we need to identify the nucleophiles, which will give electrons away. So we're going to draw arrows pointing away from those nucleophiles. So here in the answer I've made all the nucleophiles that would be attracted to electrophiles potentially with blue arrows and the previous arrows I drew in the first part of the solution I've made gray. Those identify all the partial positive sites that might be electrophilic and therefore pull a nucleophile pair of electrons towards those sites. So just to recap how we came to this rather complicated answer, we first find all the polar bonds and put partial charges on those and find the multiple bonds. 
we have to also fill in the lone pairs to identify all of those electrons. Then we identify the positive sites as being electrophiles. They will attract nucleophiles. They'll pull electrons towards them, as indicated by arrows pointing towards those sites. Finally, the pi bonds and lone pairs on negative ends of polar bonds are the best candidates to be nucleophiles to give electrons away towards some type of electrophile. So here's the same type of problem, but using a different starting material. We're using strychnine in this case. So you might want to pause the video and see if you can get the solution on your own. And again, identifying the electrophilic sites. They should be the partial positive sites at the ends of polar bonds. So anywhere where you'd have a partial plus, you should have an arrow pointing to those sites. And next, identify the nucleophiles. The nucleophiles will be giving electrons away so anywhere where you have an excess of electrons, so you've got four electrons all piled in the same space and all these double bonds, for example, or lone pairs that aren't even held in bonds, those would be good examples of nucleophiles that would give electrons away.